Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. I uh, just want to do a quick uh, reminder of where we're at right now with Jawbreaker. So it's doing really good. 67525 so it's uh, $2,500 away from the uh, stretch goal of getting a whole nother comic book. This is crazy. It's Jawbreaker's Lost Souls 50 pages. If we hit, if we hit 70,000, there will be a second book called Jawbreakers Book 2 with art by uh, Kelsey Shannon. Very, very excited about this. Uh, but anyway, uh, oh, so the link for this will be in the description for the video. So anyway, uh, my DMs and emails were blowing up about this, but um, I kind of, I didn't have enough information to uh, do uh, a video about it. Basically, Christina Harrington, one of the milkshake girls from Marvel, uh, quit mysteriously. Uh, said she was still going to work in comics, made sure to uh, threaten uh, <laughs> political enemies she had made at Marvel that she would not hire them at her next job as well. So her next job is Aftershock. I don't know a lot about Aftershock. Uh, I've heard that it kind of started as like a boutique. Uh, like it, like the first run was really good and now they're kind of like a general indie you know, uh, company. But I was like, eh, I don't really have enough information right there. But then on the Bleeding Cool main page, uh, right next to it, there was this article about Nick Spencer. So um, this is the one that I uh, read and I actually found very uh, heartening. So um, I went to the comic shop the other day and I noticed they had this wall of $1 comics. It was a lot of like, uh, like Marvel calls their $1 comics True Believers. It's reprints. Image has one called Image First. I think the DC one is called DC Essentials. I gra I went a little nuts with them, and I got way too many. And I ended up getting Morning Glories number one, which came out in, like, 2011. Uh, I have a friend who absolutely loves Morning Glories, but uh, I couldn't even finish the first issue. It, there was nothing wrong with it. It, just, it was just high school, prep school shenanigans. I was like, eh, I don't care. But uh, I did think it, this uh, article really, really caught my eye because it says uh, to prepare for Amazing Spider-Man run, Nick Spencer read every Spider-Man comic. Now, you got it just right off the bat. That sounds like a lie to me. <laughs> that sounds like the kind of lies I would tell in like the fourth or fifth grade. Bro, uh, how was the uh, summer? It's like, dude, I read every Spider-Man comic ever made <laughs> like it, it sounds very fourth or fifth grade style lie but um so one of the things they make a point of is that he's had a lot of free time now the other thing about this article is is uh, i kind of just kind of forgot about uh bleeding cool i used to for years i used to check it all the time and then it's uh website is very malicious especially on my uh cell phone it always do these fake virus uh, but I've got Adblock, and that seems to keep it stable on, on tablet. So I haven't read anything from Jew Terror in a long time, and he's still just, like, ridiculous. So it's like, 2016 and 2017 were rough years for Nick Spencer. Maybe the worst in a decade since he was driven from Cincinnati after losing his city council. Bit. It's like, God, there's so much, like, this is not journalism. Okay. 2016 and 2017 were very good for him. I'm just going to throw out a rough estimate that that dude probably made 150 to 200 grand both years. Just on the sheer volume of stuff he had coming out with Marvel. He did thousands of pages probably in those two, two years. And it's a really weird thing where you say the last two years were rough, maybe the worst in a decade since, like... What? So you're just trying to name drop the... He ran for city council 10 years ago. Nobody cares. Uh, so I forgot to prep this, but I went to go look at his comic book uh, database. Uh, com comic book DB is it's kind of like IMDB, but for comics. And it looks like uh, he started in comics in 2009, but his real, like, real deal Holyfield first real book was Morning Glories from Image, which I guess was kind of like a mild hit for a while. I don't know. Those are my broke years. I, I don't know. I, bro I bought like six comics a year back then um uh so then it's like then he just talks about it, he tweets a lot and then uh secret empire 
uh, sold uh, so poorly in comparison to past Marvel events that it was defeated by Batman and the Flash in sales charts. Now that was, God, why cannot these people cannot be uh, honest? They like there's something about bleeding cool. They cannot say anything honest. Like if you if it's raining out and if you ask if there's raining out, they will say. Uh, it's dry and then when you go out and you get soaked they'll say it's dry in all the spaces in between the raindrops like okay so you're talking about batman and flash the button which is kind of like a hidden mini event from last year they weren't secret emperor was not outsold by the average my god they always have to do this stuff um secret empire saw ca uh, captain america turned into a nazi uh Basically, uh, uh, Nick Spencer did not react well to it. He just ended up arguing and blocking people on Twitter. Then he ended up uh, rage quitting Twitter right after Secret Empire uh, ended. Uh, Bleeding Cool, like last summer, said Ta-Nehisi Coates is going to be on Captain America. Nick Spencer was going to be on uh, Spider-Man. Everyone was freaking out. I was freaking out. And then it happened, and it was actually better that we kind of knew it was going to happen for months. So then when it happened, it's just like... Okay, that's gonna happen. Now we gotta deal with it. Um, uh, I kind of had this weird feeling where I said, I'm gonna give Ta-Nehisi Coates a chance, but I don't even wanna think about Nick Spencer being on it. And now as we get closer, Nick Spencer looks to be the book that you should actually give a chance while Ta-Nehisi Coates just seems like he's just Mark waiting it up and just absolutely flubbing it uh, by being political. The third Third writer in a row to be far left extremist political on Captain America. Wow! But um, some uh, insider sent me the um, free comic book day, which I believe is this. No, it's two Saturdays from now. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man. I actually didn't read it because I ca I felt kind of weird getting it. <laughs> I'm gonna do a video like the the day of. Um, uh, I'm not a big fan of free comic book day. But I skim read it and it looked good. I didn't see any politics. Uh, it seemed to be like a solid, if fairly generic, Spider-Man story. Although free comic book day comics are usually extremely generic. So I was like, all right. So then I got this and I actually liked it. So um, new interview with Marvel.com. Uh, wait, why am I on Bleeding Cool if I can just go? Jeez. Wish I would have noticed that the first time. This trash website where when I can just go. Okay, so Nick, Nick Spencer swings onto Amazing Spider Man. Ha ha ha, puns. Uh, so the funny thing is, actually, it is good that I went to Bleeding Cool because this one just starts off ridiculous. Nick Spencer has written his way to the top of the heap of Marvel's elite, and he gets to prove it like never before with Amazing Spider Man, one of the most prized gigs in comics. Now we dig a little deeper into what Spencer calls the Book of My Dreams. Um, so then they say congratulations. Uh, Nick says it's the best gig in comics and the job I've dreamed of since I was a kid. Uh, he met CB Sibolsky a decade ago and told him this is what he wanted to do. Um, so uh, what kind of book would you Spider-Man be? Uh, he says the story really begins and ends with Peter. He's the heart and soul of the thing. Okay, high flying adventures. Uh, so I wanted to get back to the research. Um, oh God, sporting characters, I don't care, black cat, whatever. Uh, I might have to go back to the, uh, okay, so uh, I'm gonna go back to it because I actually I read the Bleeding Cool one. So basically he says, uh, when I got the book, I sat down and tried to comprehensively read through basically everything. Okay, freaking Bleeding Cool. You said he read every Spider-Man comic. He literally qualifies it twice by using the word tried and the word basically. It both means, it basically means he read a lot of comics. Um, so every issue of Amazing, Spectacular, Team Up, Web, Spider-Man, Sensational, Friendly Neighborhood, and all the titles in between. You name it, I read it. He says it really shows what a proud tradition there is. Everyone tries to bring their A-game when they're writing Spider-Man. And I'm directly following... Oh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, um, 
uh, Dan Slott. He is, it really does inspire you to do your best work. I'm just honored to be a part of this. So this is sounding like a very different uh, Nick Spencer than the one I interacted with. A lot of y'all interacted with on social media. You've seen him in the uh, very condescending interviews. This is looks to me very much like a guy trying to earn his reputation back. Uh, so then he basically talks about, this is the part actually I got really excited about. Any uh, So they asked, you know, any conversation about Spider-Man has to start with Lee, Ditko, or Mita. That run is, in my opinion, the high water point of mainstream American superhero comics and can never be surpassed. It takes your breath away reading it through. Beyond that perfection, I'm especially fond of two writers, Roger Stern and J.M. Dematisse. However you say that name. I'm a different kind of writer than those guys, but they both have a huge influence on me and how I view the characters. This right there is very, very good because what I'm going to talk about is something called Simpsons Syndrome. Simpsons, I don't know, I think it's just like grandparents who are watching their kids. I don't know anyone who's watched a new episode in like 15 years. You know, it's like whatever, almost 30 years old, uh, maybe it is 30 years old. It was really good for the first five to year, ten years, and then it started getting really bad. I remember peeking in on it, like at their twenty-year mark, and it was horrible. And then I was like looking online to see if it was like an aberration. And uh, longtime fans have, have said this series is now old. That the people writing it grew up after it decreased in quality. Like they grew up with the bad episodes. Um, so if someone would have said, oh, I'm just, just, I just the biggest fan of Dan Slott, I'd be like, oh my gosh. But he is looking at the entire, God, what is this? 60 plus years, whatever, of Spider Man. And he picked out Roger Stern and Jam De Matisse. And I got to tell you, though, that's a really, really, really good sign. Roger Stern took over, uh, Secret Wars 2 era. Uh, Peter uh, getting uh, the uh, symbiote costume, getting rid of it, uh, working with Ron Friends. God, that was like that was like the best run. You had uh, Hobgoblin. Uh, you had uh, the Rose. You don't know how good the Rose story. Like those were some dope stories. Black Cat, freaking uh, who's the old cat burglar guy? I forgot his name. Even like. Oh, what's that bald scientist and he's got the super apes um titano and the super apes or something like this i got i actually i actually bought a trade paperback it was like my first trade paperback i ever bought it was like 15 dollars, and I actually had to hide it from my dad because he would have freaked out that i spent that much on my comic but i read that thing to death roger stern is some and, and roger stern he's not you don't name drop roger stern he's too inside baseball like he could just say, blah, 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 Ditko, Ramita, yeah, whatever. When you say Roger Stern, I actually believe you did read a bunch of comics. And J.M. De Matisse, I mean, he did, obviously, uh, Craven's Last Stand, and then the squeakquel to it, like uh, 10, 15 years later. Uh, that's another really good sign. J.M. De, De Matisse was also a really, really good Captain America writer. Way better than Nick Spencer. So, coming out of this, how am I feeling? Cautiously optimistic? I, I I was like losing it last uh, summer when I thought about Nick Spencer on uh, Spider-Man, but now it's starting to look like it might be good. Although I got to see this little like this little like eh, like I don't like that body language. It looks pretty wimpy to me. Um, but uh, anyway, so tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about the words of uh, uh, Nick Spencer. Uh, are you cautiously optimistic? Can you never forgive? Nick Spencer, uh, I feel like my philosophy is I have to be able to turn on a dime if someone is good and just say, he's good. He's good now. This is a good book he should have been on. He was too political to put on Captain America, but Spider-Man, he's good. Um, uh, so <clears throat> tell me what you think about this video. Subscribe. <clears throat> Why do I have to get a frog in my throat at the end? Subscribe, make sure you're st still subscribed, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the Super Chat and the Patreon and the Indiegogo. 
The uh, link for the Indiegogo uh, is in the uh, description of this video for Jawbreakers Lost Souls. Uh, you guys are going to really like the next stretch goal that will be announced when we achieve this one. And the one after that is going to be like, you're not even going to believe it's real. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching, and I'll have more comic reviews up later tonight. Oh, <laughs> so this is on screen. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, oh, that's funny. I didn't stop the video, I just went on to this. So this is the Christina Harrington that people were trying to get me to do a, uh, a video on. There wasn't, but I just want you to look at that face and just realize that she's better than you. She wants you to know that. So <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye.